focusing on your first time in Singapore, you have training here which evolved before. Could you just tell us what, what do you think about the fighting landscape here right now? I think that the fighting landscape has a lot of room to grow, but the great thing is that there's a tremendous amount of interest here. And interest generally garners talent. So um, I think there is room Sorry. to grow, but it just needs a little bit of direction. And do you agree with the direction that the UFC is going uh, with the initiative here today? With what? With the initiative here today, with the launch of uh, yes. you know UFC in Singapore and stuff like that? Absolutely. The, the fact that there's such a strong following in Asia and particularly Singapore as we're here, it speaks a lot to um, the fan base that's here and the athletes that would love to, to compete for the UFC. And, and everyone is kind of evolving together. The UFC is evolving, Singapore is evolving, MMA is evolving, the athletes are evolving. So I think it's just a matter of working all together to make this the biggest and best. I think it's jarring that there's no female Asian fighter in the UFC right now. What do you think about that subject? That, do you think the women's division need a bit more diversity in that sense? Um, absolutely. I, I would love to see more Asian women talent. You know, I'm all for growing the, the women's market in every way. Um, I know that there has been female uh, Asian talent before. Obviously, I fought in Japan against Rizai. <coughs> And um, also, I think of Sohi Han. If I say Han, mm -hmm. Sohi Han. Sohi. Yeah, that was a. You know, she's incredibly talented. She's just a little bit small for the division. She really is probably one weight class smaller than the smallest weight class the UFC offers for women at the moment. Mm -hmm. But that's also something that we're seeing change and grow. Um, is the uh, more divisions being added? Obviously, with the women's 145 pound division. I suppose you never know when a 105 pound division or a 125 pound division is is going to come. And what's your role now with, with the UFC as you kind of step away from active competition? Uh, I suppose I've taken sort of an ambassador role in the sense that I'm trying to help the brand grow in any way possible because I believe in it. Uh, this has been my dream since the day that I started was to fight for the UFC. And now that my competitive career has come to a close, I want to help others to reach their goals, to, to be able to fight for the premier organization of the world, the number one organization of the world. So in any way that I can help that grow, any way that I can help the athletes flourish, uh, that's what I'm here to do. Do you still get the itch to compete? <laughs> um, I still compete in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, so that fill, fills the void and also training, yeah. Last question, everyone. Misha, um, a UFC gym is open in Manila, and I know you've uh, visited the country once. Yes. Do you plan to uh, teach over, over, over in Manila and uh, inside the UFC gyms? and um, educate, educate the fans over there. There is a lot of uh, doors that are open in this transitionary period, so I'm open to a lot of things. I've actually you know, considered spending uh, an allotted amount of time, four to six months in Australia, four to six months in, in Singapore, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, just, again, helping the, the Asian market grow. I'm really interested in that because I think that the possibilities are really endless and to show such promise so early on with such little effort put into it means that anything that we do here is going to grow exponentially. So um, I wouldn't be against it. You know, I'm a bit of a, a world traveler and I enjoy experiencing culture. Singapore has been a wonderful experience for me. So uh, you just may see a little bit more of me in the, this market around this way. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Misha. Thank you. So